Live case number three, number four, coming up on calcific bifurcation lesions. So uh, please, may I have Dr. Devori, Dr. Freeman, Dr. Jaffer, Dr. Lasala, Dr. O'Neill, Dr. Reitman, Dr. Sardella, and Dr. Dr. Tamis Holland, and Dr. Teal up to the podium, please. Thank you. And we go live. Yeah, 73 year old male, classical angina, multiple risk factors, hypertension, diabetes, prior, uh, uh, prior bypass surgery. So after bypass surgery also, he continued to, you know, have uh, re-blockages. So bypass was in 2012. And uh, he has had multiple PCIs of the vein graft, all these uh, things. So this was the vein graft intervention we did last time. So left side, show the left side. So circ is okay, stent looks good. There's a patent lemur. So this is the case of today where you have this uh, ISR and we actually have seen the, the stent, original stent was done outside. So when they did the original stenting, they did orbital atherectomy and they did, uh, put uh, two large stents from the distal RCA all the way to the proximal RCA and uh, at that time if you see it, the stent was well expanded. Uh, so here we have this ISR. So I can tell you for the last 15 minutes after my Can you talk, show I've us the angiogram, please? Okay. Why I don't see what is playing there? Yeah. Now we see it. Okay. We see the right coronary. So, wow. Okay. So, the, okay. They're showing you the right coronary. Can we also put in multiple screens, the five? Yeah. Uh, so that you can see it. So the center part is ISR. So uh, angiographically, if you see that, I think uh, though, uh, like I said, when they did the initial uh, uh, PCI, it looked well expanded. Uh, it looks like there is under expansion or maybe the calcium. It was heavily calcified vessel. They did do orbital atherectomy, but here looks like right, that area exactly is under, uh, under uh, you know, the under expanded stent or the uh, calcium outside the stent. So what would you be do for guide selection here? Um, you know, should be either a, a SCR guide because it's a shepherd's crook uh, takeoff or probably Lima, but then we tried uh, all of those uh, catheters. We are able to wire, but then uh, we can show, show the thing. You see that? No, 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 what we, yeah. See that? Yeah, we see This that is the fine cross, fielder, fielder went down, fine cross would not make a turn. I tried to do free wire of the rota, would not go, then we thought maybe a Lima guide would do a better job. Even with Lima uh, was not helping us. And then we moved on to changing from, instead of that, we took a Corsair and even with Corsair could not get it. And right now, this is where we are in the sense, um, you see that it has crossed the lesion. The dark part is uh, distal to the lesion. Our, our initial plan was that uh, the way we saw it, that we could do a one seven, uh, imaging first, 175 bar, then image, and then do it. We were not sure imaging would, uh, anything would have happened uh, in the first imaging. So since we are having so much difficulty in wiring, we are not going to do anything right now image-wise. We will try to do rotational atherectomy. For initially, we had selected 175 bar, but the way we are struggling, we have downgraded it to 125 bar. And I think let's see how we will proceed as we go. So I'm advancing forward good one to five oh, on it, it looks like it's a little bit under expanded that's the area of the overlapping of the two stands yeah but i'm, I'm yeah. also the thinking wire didn't go this well because of the compliance of the vessel is so high yeah. No, um, uh, it's a tight and the lesion itself if you see angulated lesion it's a Okay, good. Okay, guys. Are you ever concerned? Uh, I mean, this is a, it's an interesting question. This is a tough question and maybe we'll just go down. Uh, we have uh, a lot of great operators here and maybe we start with you, Jazz, Dr. Singh. Um, what would you do here? Would you, would you be so concerned about the wiring that you'd use a guide extension already to just get a really good distal wire position or 
um, you know, you see what they're doing. They're already going in with the rotoblader, and they might Dynaglide in and, and, and try to get a better position. What would be your approach okay. here? Okay, good. Dynaglide. Yeah, you know, I would, okay. first of all, the guide Start is not sitting down. well, and I would, good. I think they are six French. I would have probably used a bigger guide and the M plus guide probably, and then leave that wire in there, and I would wire a okay, so second that. wire down, and I would take a second wire alongside it, and then once that goes, there's a good likelihood that it might go. So now, you know, they're dynagliding the rotor blade. I would, you know, in this scenario, I would probably think about doing, you know, because of this complexity, not do it, a laser thoracotomy yeah. followed by shockwave. That's what I would probably do because uh -oh. this is a very okay, resistant don't, don't, don't Ron, Ron Waxman, welcome. Don't it's move. so nice to see you. What, what are your comments here? Thank you. Uh, no, one approach is to use a guideliner to help you to situate it. And uh, if you can get the guideliner a little bit uh, further in, you'll be able to get enough support to do the case. Yeah, Any might, other comments? Uh, you might do even something simpler. Uh, Dr. O'Neill and I were discussing this, that they went from a, an AL to a uh, know, LIMA yeah, guide. Yeah, you can actually go the other way, go to an AL2, give you more backup and support, bank off the, um, the aorta, give them a little bit more support to try to get this down. Okay, okay, stop, stop, stop. I, I am always a little hesitant to try to rotoblate in an area where I'm very close to the radio opaque portion. As people recognize, it's an 014 wire at that point, yeah. but the uh, rotoblader travels nervous, over a 9,000 of an inch wire, and if you hit that part too hard, you can separate it. Okay, stop. Uh, Roxy, is this an extra support wire or it's a... Uh... No, no, this is, that's, the, that's the rotor blade. No, this wire. is a rotor wire. But no. rotor, rotor floppy wire, yes, extra support rotor wire, wire would not even make which, a turn. Which rotor wire is it? Extra wire. support or, yeah. or the other one? It's rotor floppy, it's floppy I think. Wire. The floppy wire. Yeah. Floppy. Okay. That's a misconception too. Bill, did you have... No, no we I, have I, done these cases in the sense. I think you have to be really careful about rotor blading at the radio peak portion because I've separated two wires that way. It's kind of risky to go right there. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the thing is, if you if you think, why does rotor blader work here? You know, the, the way it is, it's, you know, it wasn't underexpanded and, and now you have restenotic tissue. Maybe it was underexpanded. The only way it really works is it doesn't cut really metal. It causes heat generation. So, you know, in this scenario, you want to actually, you could actually create big okay, pulse with a laser arthrectomy and good. shockwave to, to get a similar picture. But this, this is a uh -oh. risky approach because sometimes the rotor can get stuck in these areas too, and especially where your okay. wire not being do far that, down. Do yeah, yeah and, and I am a little concerned about that lasers. very small burr. And you, you, can't, uh, uh, you can't control we'll when a rotoblader jumps out of the lesion because it can come out like a pistol shot. And that's how you lose it. Bill's uh, recollections and his own experience of separating two just like that. So it, this is a risky proposition here. Dr. Uh, Kinney, what are, what, are you, what are you thinking? What's going on there? Tell us a little bit about no, what no, your No, no, I know why it's coming back. Uh, it's about, my thought was that even if I do half, maybe I did maybe one third of that lesion with rotational atherectomy, we'll try to go with regular wire. Um, you know, uh, like Dr. Singh mentioned, should try a laser. I don't know whether the laser will make a turn because majority of the uh, things, uh, you know, we, you know, nothing is making a turn. You know, the shepherd's crook uh, is not yeah, making a turn. But we will get, li we will need five minutes to get the laser ready anyway. Yeah. Dr. Sharma, yeah. yeah. Just leave that wire there and wire alongside it. I think with a buddy wire, I think there is a it chance. It may not go. It is such a tight lesion. Side by side may not go. We'll try that. But we'll come out with this. I guess with this one, we'll come out. Yeah. Right? Yeah, this this yeah. is clearly such you know a what? difficult can... lesion. This whole vessel is encased in calcium that it's going to be yeah. a multimodality kind of case. It may be a, a laser followed by a rotoblader followed by a shock yeah, with, with some ballooning in between. Okay. You'll tell them. Yeah. Is, so what we are going to do is we I will do? Can we go to it Dr. with the field and uh, try laser. And then like uh, Dr. Lazala mentioned, no, no, nothing wrong. We have done that, especially in CTO cases, heavily calcified CTO. Sometimes you do laser, get some lumen, and then try to do rotational atherectomy. So I think we will use that route. But they're saying they're ready in another room. Oh, good. Room. So Dr. can Sharma we go to the to other room? There. I don't know. Yeah, it's a great idea. We, we really want to stay with you, Anu, because this is really a very, very interesting yeah, this case. Yeah, is, this, is, this is the tough case to understand yeah. how do you would handle something like yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you guys uh, missed the real case of the symposium. I know. Okay. This is what I, I know. I know. Believe me, yeah, I've been exactly. trying to get to this room 
for a long time. Man, yeah, men, men have to do their show, so let's see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so, Joe. I so, think when we left you, right? Uh, yeah, tell us where we were. When we left you, you basically were going to do use a guide extension. Uh, we, we took, uh, yeah, we took uh, Dr. Lasala's. Uh, he said that, remember, we could go, so I can tell you. Now we have the Godzilla. I just wanted to tell you, Godzilla just would not go anywhere. So this is where we are. We are to take a 2 balloon and get the Godzilla. It's not even making a turn. You see that? Yeah, yeah. So this is that the, we got just at the mouth. Then went with the laser. So this is where we are. I did various way of gut. Laser somehow went, but did not cross the entire the lesion. I think probably did half of it. So then I said, okay, let's uh, let's go probably go back to the rota. So finally we were able to do the rota again, but same did not cross the lesion completely. But at least what happened is if you see the wire, we were able to get the wire down. At least the wire is just showing so. you fluorosave. Just see how this is on Dyna. How difficult was it to get the rota across? So every time you try to advance into the vessel, everything is coming out. So on Dyna, you gradually go forward. You okay. see that? Yeah. And then, since we were able to do the wire, even then, probably not able to cross the lesion. See that? This yeah. is the max we could get. So right now, we are wired side by side. With the, Now, since we have done a laser and some kind of 1.25 bar, this is a 2-0 balloon, if it even makes any turn here. Now, we have, we have Godzilla there. Because I, I wonder if you would again. even, if you could, I mean, I, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy idea, but maybe after, if you yeah, dilate it a little bit, then maybe you can you bring in IVL. Bring your 1.25 bar a little more. Yeah, I mean, you could do microcatheter, no, no, no. you the could 1.25 bar did go in. It's going to be very tough to bring here right now. It's going to be... Did not cross. Yeah, it's going to be okay. hard. Yeah. Now yeah. get the Godzilla again. I would do microcatheter, and if it goes, then I could probably, you could put a wiggle wire in there, probably change the bias, and then try to take a, a balloon down there. It's really guideline, guideliner uh, would be, or guideline extension would be the best way, if you can deliver it. And I believe well, she, you can. She tried. I think it was hard. Um, she couldn't get it so around you, the back. Yeah. You have this is not even balloon. making. Uh, you have to know one thing. When you have a stent, using guide extension is very hard. No matter what people say, it's very hard. If it is a native vessel, the same, this Godzilla would have gone all the way down or whatever uh, you want to use guide extension, it would have gone and we would have been able to go there. Once you have an ISR, it's very hard to go with the guide extension. But that's okay, we'll now try again with the guide extension and uh, that's a, that was 2 or 12, right? New, would not go. I still have two wires, hoping that two wires can uh, help uh, Movement of the balloon. Go, go, take the wire. Yeah. Rotor wire, pull the wire. Yeah, I think you've tried a lot of different things. I think a wiggle wire may not be a bad idea here to change the bias. Yeah, yeah. We don't even carry it here in Mount Sinai. Okay. All right. So, what's your plan now, uh, AK? No, I think I will go with the 2012 balloon with the Godzilla. Okay. Try to get and that Godzilla now a little bit balloon. further. Yeah. Maybe then you yes. can bring the laser back and get through the whole thing. Maybe that's... No, no, I think uh, we have uh, done the laser atherectomy as much as possible. If we can get a balloon there, dilate it. Should I just think you're going to have a hard time dilating this without some... Yeah, the goal, the goal has got to be to get a balloon down there and try to inchworm that extender around that first bend. Uh, yes. So that you use the balloon to kind of... Uh, smooth off the resistance as you're going into the stent because that's where you're getting hung up. Uh, very yeah. challenging, very difficult. Your, your guide positions are constantly popping out, but you're going to have to try to inchworm a balloon down there and get the, uh, the guide extender over the first bend. Yeah, it, it's hitting the That is why spread. I tried first with the 2 -oh. So what you have, if you want to do this, uh, you know, you have to have one to one balloon size. So the 2 -oh balloon did not help me first. So we went with the 3 -oh short balloon. Yeah, just you could just inflate it at the tip of the guideline huh? and then bring it up there so that it'll allow you to go because there's a wire bias with the stent. Right. It, I wouldn't uh, take it down too much. This is like yeah, a mother gotta, and child gotta, technique, but it's hard. It's it's hard when you have instant stenosis. It's easy to say about it, but it's very hard. Now, question. I mean, you're well, going to one have other thing that uh, almost inflate. 
We recently got approved in the US, it's still not available, it's called the Open NC Balloon, which goes up to 50 atmosphere. It is available in Europe for ISR and for under-expanded calcified lesions. Uh, so it will be approved, probably, it will be available, it's approved by FDA, okay, it will down. be available for marketing down. probably in the fall of this year, so something How deliverable is that balloon yeah. compared to the other equipment? Ron, they asked, how, how deliverable is that balloon compared to other equipment? It is a pretty deliverable. I mean, you should ask uh, our European colleagues if they're using it, but uh, I've... Reno, you know. are you using that? No. Okay, go now. I, I know that it is a, a system, but I never used it. Uh-huh. Poker? Mm, same as um, Gerard. I have never done it. Okay. Yeah, Anu, is your guide, is your guide, no. Guidezilla over both wires? No. Or over one wire? Yeah. Over both wires? Both wires. Yeah. Well, yeah. if that is not allowing you to go, that's an issue. Yeah, she's got, she's yeah. really, if this so, is running out of uh, tricks here. So now what? Give me 1.2 I would use a, I would use a longer balloon because I think the guideline is getting caught on that edge right there. If you could put a balloon over it to cover it, it's sort of uh, then okay. slide it around. Okay, I think around. it went further down. Okay, some die. Did you hear Dr. O'Neill's uh, recommendation, a longer balloon? I don't know whether a long balloon will make a turn. You see how I'm struggling with the 12 balloon. Yeah. We can try that, but I don't think it's going to help. Go. You have? But he thinks Rupture? that the Godzilla no, could no. then go yeah, over that longer balloon and the, turn the, around. The and equivalent make a turn. of that would be the balloon that proximal segment before yeah. you get uh, down yeah. to the middle portion. How about taking a compliant I balloon? I tried that before. We can do that. Get us a three, five, I sure eight short balloon. Uh, this is compliant balloons, right? I know you're using. Okay. The eight is a not non compliant. The compliant now, balloon will go in better. The compliant balloon length you have? Only 15, right? 12 you have? If you have 12. Well, don't you think a compliant balloon will go in further and then you can pull your guideliner over? So if you don't, if you don't mind, we're going to leave you, uh, if it's okay, Dr. Kinney, we're going to put you on the side yeah, yeah. here and we're going to let, uh, we're going to go to the talks if that's okay. So we can, so, because we're I so I think that's behind. another uh, case. What do you want to okay. do? You can do the talks. Is that sound you okay with you? Talks. Are you okay with that? I mean, we yes, really, yes, yes, we're yes. very, very uh, excited about this case, but I also think, you know, we got to get to the talks and we've got this great debate coming up on uh, LV support. So we don't want, uh, the, the place is full. Yes, Everybody no wants to watch this. So is yes, it okay? Yes. We're going to keep you on the side and we're going to go to, thank you so much for the wonderful panel. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kinney. Dr. Okay, so Can we get her in the we stopped. Can we put her in the main? Can you see us? Yeah, we see you on the side, but we want you in the main as well. They're working on it. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Explain so this, this is where we were. Uh, yeah, after Rota, remember we said we did one to five bar. It did not go all the way down. Earlier, I can tell you, uh, even before trying this, I did try to get the um, guideliner down using a three five high pressure balloon. Did not work, but this time, Again, you see that we were able to get the high pressure balloon down and then get uh, the guideliner all the way down. You see that? And yep. then we used the shock. Yeah, after that we did the shock wave. Yeah, this is the shock. Before, oh. we were able to get the IVL balloon all the way down. This is oh. where it was pre and this is post. So, exactly so, what so we So, every have device seen. was that used. Is eccentric chunk of calcium. Yeah. Rotoblader, laser, or and shock wave. <laughs> Amazing. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then we've done that. We ballooned and we have some imaging. This is now we had a 3 5 high pressure at a 24 atmospheres. And then we can show the imaging if you want. Uh, this is the imaging that we are doing with the Kanawi system, which is both IOS and OCT in one catheter. So the MLA we have got. It now is very good, this 7.5. Um, so what our prediction was of underexpanded stent, big calcific nodule behind the stent before the first uh, uh, PCI. Um, so now the question is, what do we do? We went with a 3 uh, 4 actually high pressure, trying to dilate it more. Other than that, 
um i yeah. think we probably have to leave this alone rather than putting uh, a second stand i, I um, have to tell you you, you of, leave uh, this panelists. alone with nothing treated i think it's going to come right back uh uh dr o'neil the 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 um the mic is right in front of you if you could press and give us some comments and Does, we've got uh, we've got everybody here so uh we could at least do that uh get some comments in show the simultaneous so you see in the screen you have the simultaneous IBUS and the OCT, and in the IBUS you see 360 calcium, and on the OCT from let's say 11 to 4, you see the effect of the IBL. So you see the fractures there. It's, a, it's an advantage of doing simultaneous imaging, you know, at this in the same catheter. So we've, we've been trying to expand that with every device we have, and we still, uh, you know, we still avoiding the, the ex proper expansion because of the calcium nodule. Now the issue here will be if we keep dilating and get a better lumen or we stop with the 7.5. Can you get this? And the reason that Oxana, I said uh, leave this alone because we will bring him back in a few months. We therapy? have to do. No, 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 no. It's single layer stent. Uh, that calcific nodule, remember the treatment for calcific nodule, nodular calcium. Actually, this will be a nodular calcium because a stable patient has to be some kind of atherectomy. Likely will be rotational atherectomy with a bigger birth uh, so that we will get a good stent expansion and then only place a second stent. Otherwise, that area will remain like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, this is exactly because if we keep by dilating, dilating, actually when I was going high pressure balloon, I told Pablo, please get a covered stent ready. Um, I was thinking that we could uh, probably perforate that area because you see it's an eccentric calcific nodule. These are very difficult to treat. We already have used like three pressure balloons that rupture. I totally agree with what you're Go ahead, Bill. I totally agree with what you're doing here because I've had coronary ruptures with those like pedals of calcium, you push it hard enough that they don't break and then you really have an incredible mess because you have a hard time delivering the coverage stent there. So I, I agree with you that uh, it'd be better to process here. One, two quick points. Um, I, I don't like using 125, or I, I just don't find that it provides enough that to me. I think a 15 going slowly is a little bit better. Uh, but for the audience, one, one life saving thing is that if you do have to push the bird through and you can't pull it back, that, that's a problem. And actually, there's a technique where you cut the rotoblader cable and then put a guideline over the rotoblader bird. And that's a way of pulling it out if it ever gets stuck. Wow, yeah. Great, great. Uh, yeah, yeah, excellent point. Yeah. We, we had a little stall. We, we actually did have a little stall with the 125. We felt the. the dramatic decrease in the RPL, and we've removed it immediately, and we, we were able to, to go through. Yeah, this but the points are very well taken. It. I would just add one thing, you really need to measure the MLA of the CSA post procedure now. And if you do have more than six, it's probably going to be enough. Uh, I don't think that you need to push more in terms of physiology, probably it's going to be enough. So almost you have to make sure that it's not going to fill with tissue. And that's where the role of bracket therapy is. You may have tissue there before, if you never had tissue before, we probably don't need to do bracket therapy. That's the beauty of doing imaging and getting the classification is just mechanical or also biological is that yeah it's pretty unbelievable what you just did but i'm thinking what is that, it uh, this is How a much? great plan we okay. fully agree an um, unbelievable case you showed us all these three technologies and it's perfect segue for our next talk our next sort of uh, uh one second uh, yeah uh, mla right now at the tightest where we did everything is 7.6 you can see it there yeah, yeah. i think we take uh, everybody's um, uh, advice uh, it's time we stop here and we'll bring this patient back electively in four months yeah. no 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 so yeah. we, we you, can't wait to that. hear about this it's a very exciting and we'll let everybody know thank you dr kinney masterful job unbelievable